everything. Yeah. All right, inverses. Tell me what an inverse is. Okay. Mm, it could be. Okay, so if I have f of x, the inverse would be negative 1, right? But tell me what it is. How do you find it algebraically? Switch all the x and y's. Okay, so if I'm talking about a set of numbers, then the inverse would just switch these two, right? And if I'm talking about algebraically, if I had something like f of x equals, and we'll just do something super easy first, 2x plus 3, then to find the inverse of that, I would just say, well, if x equals 2y plus 3, how do I solve that for y? Um, the zero. Just solve it like two. Put a zero in for x. Move to 3. And then divide by 2. Because it's getting y by itself. So now x minus 3 over 2 equals y. And y is the inverse of f of x. So inverse f of x equals x minus 3 over 2. Okay. Y'all remember doing that? We didn't use it for a whole lot in algebra 2. We just did it. Okay. Now, I'm going to give you a lot of little things, then I'm going to put it all together. Yeah. Yes, just be able to recognize this notation that that means inverse. Okay. Like it might say, for instance, it might say if f of x equals 2x plus 3, find the inverse of x, of f. And you just know that that's what it means. All right, tell me, remember, I, I'm going to hit on a couple different little things, and then I'm going to put everything all together. So if there's one thing in particular you need a little extra help on, tell me whenever we're there. How do you tell if a relation is a function? If it's the vertical line test. Ah, vertical line test. Good job. Go first. Good job. Good job. Good job, Debbie. Ah. <laughs> Vertical line test, one and only one output for every input. How do we tell, looking only at the function itself or only at the graph, how do we tell if the inverse is a function? A horizontal line. Yeah, somebody said it. Horizontal. <laughs> horizontal line test. What is it called? If it passes both. It's actually three words. One word repeats itself. Function, function, function. All three words start with O. Nope. Two of the words start with O. The order of operations. What is order it? Order of operations. Nobody remembers? Yes. One to one. One to one means. <laughs> Yeah, two. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. I didn't know it was a competition. I'm sorry. Okay, so one to one means it is a function as well as its inverse is a function if it passes vertical line test, horizontal line test. Let me give you some examples. You tell me yes or no if they're one to one. Are you ready? Yes. It's a competition. No, I'm just kidding. It's not a competition. <laughs> What is it? Oh yeah. my gosh. Yes, it's a one-to-one. -one. Yes, it's one-to-one. One job, -one. Joy. No. 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 Why? It's a vertical. 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 It's a vertical
It's inverse, it's not a function. Good job, Stella. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're not ready. We're not ready. It is one to one. <laughs> but, <laughs> bonus round, what's the parent function? Uh, <laughs> All right. I'm right. Let's practice finding some. Y'all got this. Remember what I told you the other day? A lot of pre-cal is taking what we did in Algebra 2 and doing harder equations, a little bit harder stuff, advancing it a little bit more. I'm going to pause and I'm going to switch X and Y. Okay, you can't add 8 because that 8 in the denominator. What would you do? So that's what I would do. I would multiply by y minus 8, top and both sides. Remember what I'm trying to solve for. What am I trying to solve for? Y. All right, so I have x times y minus 8. Yes. You could distribute or you could divide by x. Either one's fine. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. I thought I ate on that one. I thought I ate, yeah. I was waiting on somebody to hear me. No, I did. I was quite disappointed. Thank you, Zoe. I appreciate it. Oh. Okay, wait. I'm confused. No, I just don't understand why I can't add eight. Now. I still don't understand how I can't add eight. Okay. If I just add eight, because you're not adding eight, you're just dividing by one minus. Okay. If I do this, I got to have a common denominator. Which. Oh. Okay. Now, I'm not done. And I'm not done because. I need to state any restrictions that might occur in my domain. Okay. I got this. Um, zero. Whoa. This time I don't have to, you're right actually. I don't have to worry about the initial one this time because an inverse is its own. It's not building one function from another. Okay, so you don't have to worry about a combined domain. All I have to do is look at the domain of just this one. So as I look at this, I know that x can't be Zero. So how do I write that? Nope. You just look at what you have. So nice. All right. Is the original a function? Yes. How do you know? Even easier than that, how do you know? What does that mean? I mean it's, a it's literally in its name, it's a function. It passes the vertical line test. Is if I if it's defined as f of x, it's a function. But is its inverse a function? No. No. It's 
Okay, doesn't matter now. Now I need to look. Is it a function? Yes, why? What does this look like? What does this look like if I graph? If I take that parent graph, it's up eight. That's not imp impacting anything. And then it's a vertical stretch by five. So is it still a function? Yes. You aren't giving me the right reasons why, though. So, okay, it passes the vertical and the horizontal line test. Okay, so it passes, the first one passes both. So is it, or this one passes VLT? VLT. I'm a little, I'm a little stuffy. Uh, this one passes, VLT says that it's a function, HLT says that the inverse is a function. This is the inverse, so if the inverse passes VLT, if it's a one, right. Okay, so look, this tells me that f of x is one to one. Okay, listen, okay. HLT, okay, it's on the original function though. Here's the original, right? You look at the original, which is doing like this. If it passes, okay, vertical line test, yep, it's a function. Horizontal line test tells me, yep, it's inverse is a function. Or I could graph the inverse itself and look at it, and if it passes VLT, okay. it's a function. So what you're saying is I can find the inverse. Yes. You know if it's one to one. Huh? Put the first, well, it just depends on how you're testing it. You can test it either way. You can test the original function by doing both tests, or you can algebraically find the inverse and then graph that and do vertical on it. Either one. Yes, yes. So sh sh the directions on this would say, just so you know what you have to do, determine if F has an inverse. If it does, find the inverse, state any restrictions in the domain. Huh. We'll see. Why? It's not an inverse function. Not that it doesn't have an inverse. It doesn't have an inverse function is what we're looking for. Okay, so how do we know that? Let's let's look at it algebraically first. If I subtract six, by the way, what's the inverse operation of a power of two? Oh, square root. A square root, right? That's what okay. <laughs> subtract six. We said those are inverse operations, so that's what I use to cancel it out. But whenever I take a square root, I have to do a plus or minus. Oh. What happens is I end up with, I'm not going to plot it exactly, a top piece and a bottom piece. That's not a function. Oh my God. If I were to graph, yeah, we say no inverse function, right? Look at that, look at that red graph there, right? That's what this looks like. Mm -hmm. 
No. And why look? Oh, fails. So it's there's no inverse function because it fails the horizontal line test. Horizontal. Horizontal of the function, vertical of the inverse. Those are the same thing. Testing, hold on. Testing inverses. I'm going to say functionality. I always say that, but I'm not sure that's an exact word. The horizontal line test on the original or a vertical line test, this is a big or, of the inverse. Either one of those will tell you if it's a function. Then it doesn't have an inverse function. We say no. Right. Then yes, it has an inverse function, and we can find that algebraically. Everything could have an inverse. It's just not a function. The inverse is not. So essentially, you're only looking at one to one. You won't do a horizontal line test on an inverse. No inverse function. Because the inverse wouldn't be a function. Right? Follow me? No. Try this one. Same directions, same, same song and dance. Oh, does it have any domain? Oh, no, well, it doesn't because it doesn't have a function, so I don't have to oh, worry about okay. it. Oh. If it's no, then you just say no because failed horizontal line test or it's not a function, and then you move on. <laughs> what? Yes. Yes. Build a snowman. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ask me again. I'm sorry. If it has an inverse, find the inverse. And then list any domain restrictions. If it has an inverse function, find the inverse function. If it passes vertical and horizontal, it does. You can, or you can know what a cubic graph looks like, right? What a cube root, I mean, looks like. I wouldn't want you to lie to me. Oh, I'm 
It doesn't matter which order you put them in. So I know that a cubed root graph looks like this. So I know that it's going to pass both, both vertical and horizontal. I don't have to specifically graph it. I can just know my parent functions and know that no matter how I transform that, it's still going to be one-to-one, -one, right? So I'm still going to have an inverse function. Not always, because look at if you do if you take a quadratic unless we restrict let's we'll do one like this next let me show you what it looks like what what a controversial kind of thing would look like does this one make sense are there any domain restrictions no okay look at this one Nine plus sixty-four x cubed. No restrictions. Yes. Because this cancels each other out. Right. All right. Take a look at this one. This one looks a little different because it's got a restriction that follows it. So let's think about what this means. I have a parabola that's shifted up one and it's got a stretch of, or down one, sorry. Down one and a stretch of three, right? A vertical stretch of three. Right? So, and it really doesn't, this isn't, but look at the restriction. Now it is. It's a piecewise. It's a part of a piecewise, but it's only one piece. You're only giving me one piece. Okay. So it's a function, and its inverse is also a function because I've restricted the domain to make it both be a function. Mm. Well, if I hadn't restricted this, because they're not going to be. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's the equation of the inverse. Yes. And in fact, we're fixing to find it and graph it. You don't have to do that yet. You don't have to do that yet. Say it one more time. This time I'm not taking the negative part of it because I was restricted in the beginning, right? So now my inverse is just does that have any domain restrictions on it? No, because it's true. 
on the bottom. Like, where's the red? Am I wrong? No, can't have a negative in the radical. There's no. So. <laughs> Got to be bigger than negative one. So the domain restriction of the inverse, negative one. Remember two things we look at when we look at a, an equation. Fractions and radicals. Bottom can't be zero. Radical can't be negative. So once I had my new equation, I looked at the radical and went, eh, wait, 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 wait. With me? I can't, this can't go negative. So to make sure it doesn't go negative, I set it greater than or equal to zero. The bottom can't be zero. No, it is a function. Yes. Passes the vertical line test. I also know that square root functions are always functions. Because I know what this parent graph looks like. And no matter I know it does this. No matter how I shrink, stretch, twist, move it, it's always going to be a function. So I know it's a function. You would have to do one as a positive and then in the next line do it as a negative. Can't be zero on the bottom. Right. All right. Are y'all ready to get to the hard part? Verifying. Inverse. Okay. <laughs> We found the inverse. Oh, no. What? Two ways. We have done we have done algebraically in um, algebra two. We did not do graphically in algebra two, so that's the new stuff. So I'll review you on algebraically, and then I'm gonna take a little bit of time for for graphically. Are y'all ready? Algebraically. We found it. We didn't <laughs> verify. You've done this, though. This should be review for you. If f of x and g of x are inverses, then you have to show two things. Who's the number of the day? f of g of x must simplify down to just equal x. Y'all remember doing this now? Y'all are telling a story. Y'all don't remember for real, for real? Kristen, do you remember? No. She's just being nice because she doesn't want y'all to get mad at her. Show us an example with numbers. Okay. 
For example, verify algebraically that these two are inverses of each other. I'm telling you they're inverses. Your job is to verify that they are inverses. So I need you to show this and this. Not equal each other. You have to show f of g of x. So let's just do that. f of g of x means f of 2x plus 7. So everywhere there's an x and f, I plug in 2x plus 7. So, Choice. All right, you can't cancel out more than one operation at a time. So don't, I'm telling you it's going to equal X. Don't just go through and mark everything out. First thing that would cancel would be what here? Sevens, that's right. Positive seven, negative seven, cancel. That's zero. 2x divided by 2 is, it verifies forwards. Now you got to do it backwards. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we want it to equal x both ways, backwards and forwards. It's really not hard, it's just tedious. So now I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take G, and I'm going to plug in X minus 7 over 2. And I'm going to cancel out in the right order, one thing at a time. What cancels first? The 2s. That's right, the 2s. Wait, you don't actually solve it. Yep. This is just the algebraic. Okay. That's what you've already done. I hope now that we've done it that you remember yeah, doing it. Okay. 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 Algebraic is the slightly, I mean, graphically is the slightly hard one. Y'all are not going to like it, but that's okay. One more thing. One more thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I told you two ways. Smiley face. Let's do second way. Smiley face. So we we talked in algebra two about whenever you graph them, it almost looks like they've turned and they have. Here's what really happens. If two functions are graphed and they are inverses of each other, then they are reflections over the line y equals x. What's the line y equals x? It's So what I'm going to do is I'm going to graph both of them and ensure that they look like they are reflections of each other over that line. That's how I verify graphically. I'll do one easy one with you and then you should pick up the pattern and it's not, it's just the graphing part that's hard on them. Well, let's do a cubic. Let's do that. For example, Find the inverse and verify that it's the inverse graphically. Algebraically find the inverse and then I'm going to graph both the function and its inverse and make sure that it looks like it's a reflection. Okay. All right, 
x minus 4 equals y cubed. So cube root of x minus 4 is the inverse. So I have the two equations that I'm graphing. This one and this one. Okay? Because I know my parent function so well. Precisely. This is a cubic that has been shifted up four. No stretches, no shrinks, just up four. So one, two, three, four. Right? And then, whoa, whoa. And then it goes up one over one, down one over one. And so it looks something like this. So So this is the one that's in black. I'll do this one in red. So this is a cube root. Remember that looks like the S, and it's been shifted down four. And this, the first one, yep, I should label it. This is f of x. Okay. I'm just doing <laughs> this is just putting me in volume so I'll say okay so we go right four Right? And then we go up 1 over 1 because this is just the parent graph. Not stretched. Trunk. And so you might look at that and go, hmm. Why do you have that red dot right there? Nothing. It was just, I was trying to make these more accentuated. <laughs> so now my question is if I draw in the line y equals x does that does it look the same on either side yes. Okay, let me show you on my calculator. Oh, yeah. And you can make your graphs um, thick, thin, dash. Pretty cool, right? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you. Smile, Joy. Do TikTok. You want all that? Oh, look at it. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Okay. Y equals Y equals X to the third plus four. And then I'm also going to graph the cubed root of what? Hold on, Pam. Can you get back to the line? Yep. Yeah, 
Now if I graph the line y equals x, and I'm going to make it thick. If you scroll over here to the line itself, you can make it thick. You can make it shaded, shaded. You can make it where it follows a little dot across. Huh? Shade, like if you were graphing inequalities and you need to shade. Dotted. Regular. Hit enter one time. It does look, if that was a mirror, it would be exactly the same. So, yeah, it verifies. Done. Wait, are they actually? They actually.